Welcome to Red Ice Creations Radio. Glad to have you with us and thank you for tuning in. If you are a regular or new listener tuning in for the first time, good to have you with us. My name is Henrik Palmgren and we are coming to you from Sweden, Scandinavia. Uh, we are here with a new program every Thursday and Sunday. You can find us around the globe 24-7 through our website redicecreations.com that's r e d i c e creations.com on our website you'll find radio archives a busy news section with interesting important uh, upsetting and also positive stories from around the world uh, i also want to mention that we have a members section containing extended interviews with many of our guests Uh, short films, live feeds, and where you can find our entire and growing radio archive going back to uh, over two years now. Uh, today we have with us David Hatcher Childress. He is an explorer, author, and publisher behind uh, Adventures Unlimited Press. Uh, check out his websites, adventuresunlimitedpress.com. Uh, that's for the online bookstore. And uh, also wexclub.com, that's wexclub.com. Uh, that's the place to go to find out more information about the World Explorers Club that David is behind. Um, David is also one of the speakers on the upcoming Beyond Knowledge conference in Liverpool, and we're going to talk more about that uh, later in the program. Uh, we have David back with us on the show today to first discuss the Crystal Skulls. He's coming out with a new book soon, uh, co-author with Stephen Mailer, entitled The Crystal Skulls, Astonishing Portals to Man's Past. And this is a fascinating topic that kind of gradually is becoming uh, more hot as we uh, move uh, towards the release of the new Indiana Jones movie, uh, to, be, to be out later this year. Uh, in the second segment with David, we're going to talk more about Easter Island and connect this with megalithic structures and uh, lost cities from around the world. So uh, much is to come. Stay tuned. Um, myself and our listeners, and I know because of the feedback, really enjoyed the last time uh, you were with us, David. So it's a, it's a pleasure to welcome you back on Red Ice Creations Radio again. Yeah, it's good to be back with you. Uh, looking forward to our talk. Definitely. Thank you again for taking the time in your busy schedule and spending some of it with us here today. Um, I want to begin, I guess, to talk a little bit about the, the new and upcoming book here that you guys have coming out. And um, I personally had no idea that Stephen Mailer, who is a co-author to, to this book, uh, was into these kinds of subjects. I know that he has a background in Egyptology, of course, but uh, how come you guys uh, hooked up together for a project like this? Well, I've known uh, Stephen for many years, and yes, he, he is an Egyptologist, and Uh, he's, he's best known for his books uh, about Egypt, the land of Osiris, and uh, his, his second book, um, From Light into Darkness, which is about the uh, Otanism and Akhenaten and Nefertiti and some of the early history of Egypt. But a lot of people don't know that Stephen Mailer is, is really a, also an expert on crystal skulls. He... He lived in the San Francisco area for many years, although he now lives in uh, in Colorado right now. But he was a good friend of uh, Nick Nasserino. Nick uh, has passed away now, but Nick Nasserino, uh, who lived in San Francisco, was probably the greatest expert on crystal skulls who, who ever lived. He... Mm -hmm. Uh, he's profiled in our new book, The Crystal Skulls, uh, and that is a book written, uh, it's, it's really a book in two parts. Part one is written by me, and it's, that section is all basically the history and lore of, of crystals and crystal skulls, the archaeology. We talk a lot, of course, about the famous Mitchell Hedges crystal skull that was supposedly found in a in a lost city in, in Belize, right. uh, Lubantun. But we, you know, we're talking about a lot of different crystal skulls, the research, um, where these crystal skulls would come from. One of the things that's really important about these crystal skulls 
Because even weather, ancient civilizations had the technology to right. make these things. Right. And that is that's one of the big questions. Uh, something that we we do uh, address quite a bit in the book. His part of the book, the second part of the book, features a lot of uh, Nick Nasserino's adventures looking for crystal skulls. Nick uh, would actually pursue crystal skulls that he had heard about. Um, he would literally travel all over the world, um, running down uh, the owners of crystal skulls. And um, then he he was a very sensitive psychic person. He mm -hmm. he would get some kind of a reading from crystal skulls was quite an expert on crystals and crystal skulls for that matter. So the second part of the book has something of a rundown of the very famous crystal skulls such as the Max, the Texas crystal skull, there's the famous Amethyst crystal skull. There are uh, crystal skulls in some museums around the world. There's one in Paris at the uh, Trocadero Museum now. That is supposedly an Aztec crystal skull. Mm -hmm. There's also um, a well-known skull in the British Museum. That, uh, that skull has been off and on on display. Uh, for many years it was not on display, although the postcard of that crystal skull was the best-selling uh, postcard at the British Museum, and uh, if you go to the gift shop there in London, I've been there many times, and they have a really nice gift shop. But they've told me that that postcard is the best-selling postcard of of anything in the museum. And curiously, the crystal skull itself wasn't on display. Really? Yet people would still buy this postcard of it. And okay. I you know, bought hmm. it myself several times. Right, right. Um, do you know if that... Because if we think of the same skull here, I know that it has been on display as a fake for some time, but then it, it has been you know removed and, and uh, kind of back and forth, as you say. But, uh, I mean, do you know if, if they have been able to determine or if you guys have been able to determine if this is the real thing, so to speak? Well, I mean... This is the big question, really, about many of the crystal skulls, uh, particularly the really large, life-size crystal skulls, like the one in the British Museum. They they have put it back on display now because of this, the intense demand by the public to see these things, right. because they are remarkable. It's one of the funny things about crystal skulls is that they're absolutely real. I mean, there's just no question that these things are made of quartz crystal, which is extremely hard stone. I mean, only um, I mean only diamonds and and a, a few other uh, jewels like that are actually harder than quartz crystal. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the the big questions that the British Museum had, uh, the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., they also had uh, a crystal skull uh, that was, was donated to them. It allegedly also came out of Mexico, and uh, you, there was allegedly a collection of crystal skulls from the 1800s that was owned by the, the president of Mexico, uh, Porfirio Diaz. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people aren't that aware of, of you know, Mexico's rather turbulent history, particularly in the 1800s and yeah. the early part of the 1900s, yeah. where Mexico went through this uh, number of revolutions. You have Pancho Villa and, and Zapata guys running around. Even the American um, military got involved and invaded uh, Mexico at one point. But during